Thank you, Patrice, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. It's a real pleasure to be here. I'd like for the next 20 minutes to take you through the uh, coffee category. Uh, and at the uh, start, it's important to note that this is a dynamic and growing category, and we see that dynamism and growth continuing into the future. Over the past three years, the category has been growing at over 5%. And you see that growth is coming from both out of home and CPG retail. And just to give you a flavor of how the category works, about 70% of the value of this category globally is an out of home, but only 30% of the cups are consumed in out of home. CPG is the exact opposite of that, where you have about 30% of the value, but 70% of the cups. Importantly, as I say, both out of home and CPG growing in the past five years, and we see both growing into the future. So where is that growth coming from? In out of home, the biggest segment of out of home and the fastest growing segment out of home is coffee shops. But very close behind coffee shops is the emerging uh, growth area of workspace or offices. And that's essentially driven by two big trends that we're identifying. The first is the macro trend of more and more of the world's population, working population, are spending their time in office-based jobs. There are just more offices available to serve coffee in. But also, cheap workplace coffee is increasingly being replaced by solutions offered by a better brands and better experiences. So there's a value up as well as a category growth story in that space. The last out of home space that's really dynamic is hotels and lodgings. Again, as people are spending more time on leisure, you're finding the expectations of travelers in that space much greater, and that gives us many more opportunities to drive coffee into that area. Within CPG retail, the big drivers have been portioned coffee over the past few years. We see that continuing into the future. And also, we, uh, we see a lot of growth uh, coming on soluble, which is a very traditional category, one of uh, our heartland categories, but soluble is still growing at about 3% annually. The explosive growth in the category, and you heard Chris talk about this earlier today, is in ready-to-drink coffee. We're seeing this trend, which was essentially for a very long time a Japanese business, uh, with some US business really beginning to expand across the world, particularly in Asia. And I'll talk a bit more about our plans in Asia later in the presentation. The last area of CPG growth, which is, which is uh, growing, but not quite as fast, but we see this emerging, is in premium and super premium roasting ground and whole bean coffee. As people increasingly are looking to get back to the origins of coffee, and are prepared to pay a premium for what in the past was a pretty commoditized piece of business. So as I said, looking forward, we see that growth continuing. And on the uh, right-hand side of the chart, as you look at it, we've identified these six big areas of growth, which I'll refer to as we go through the presentation as the key focus areas for us to grow. It's also Important to note that with the three brands we now have in our portfolio, we believe we're incredibly well placed to delight consumers and our customers with these brands. Nescafe is the world's favorite coffee brand. And a statistic which staggered me when I first heard it, but is absolutely true, is that one out of every seven cups of coffee drunk globally, in home or out of home, is a Nescafe. So Nescafe, as our biggest and leading coffee brand, is still very much at the heart of our growth strategy going forward. But to complement that, we have in Nespresso the premium single-serve portion system, which is still growing incredibly fast. And you'll see some of the innovation that we're bringing to this platform and delivers a luxury and quality every time in every cup through that capsule system. And then the most recent brand that we have in our portfolio, of course, being Starbucks. And that is a brand that really defined the coffee shop experience and coffee shop uh, credentials for an entire generation. 
So with these three brands, I think we're very well set up to capture that growth. So coffee for us is approaching a $20 billion business, about $19 billion with the Starbucks acquisition coming in this year. It's the biggest business for Nestle in the portfolio. It's about 19% of our total portfolio. And now in the US with Starbucks, we are very clearly the number two in the US market. That means that we have an unsurpassed global footprint as well as these three great global brands to go out and capture the growth. So with that as background, how are we going to set about capturing the growth? We've identified these five strategic priorities. Chris, Laurent re referred to some of these this morning. I just want to go through them in a bit of detail now and give you a flavour of how we're going to make them work. The first is strengthen the core. And I want to focus on some examples of how we're strengthening the core, adding value to our brands and to the consumer proposition against the trends that were highlighted this morning. The first is in uh, authenticity and origins. Now, single sourced coffee is something that consumers are increasingly interested in and importantly are prepared to value through their purchase. I give you three examples from across our brands and our formats of how we're taking origins into our mix, from Nescafe Gold all the way to Master Origins on Nespresso, we find consumers are interested in the taste profile, the uniqueness, the speciality of these origins, and as I say, are prepared to pay for them. All of these products are launched, they're all doing well, and importantly, they're all retailing at about 20% premium versus their base variants. So we will continue to drive and value up through using origins and authenticity as a lever. The next area that we talked about this morning, just again to give you a flavour how we're, how we're bringing this to coffee, is in these new sensorial experiences and coffee shop experiences. First of all, let me, let me start with new health. The innovation that you see in the front, which is our Nescafe Gold uh, non-dairy uh, non cappuccinos and lattes is a product that will be rolled out this year, first of all in the UK and then all the way through Amina and Latam. And that's the first ever at scale quality product that offers dairy free alternatives in cappuccinos and lattes. So we'll be launching that with uh, oat milk, almond milk and coconut milk. Very exciting innovation, again premium priced versus the base range. We're also on Nespresso creating a range of barista cre creations, which is a specialist range of special products, which have been specially designed and roasted so that they work extremely well with milk-based recipes. So they're designed for cappuccinos and lattes and macchiatos. And they are now on sale. And again, that values up the proposition and allows consumers to get precisely the right experience through our coffees based on the trends and their, ex uh, their expectations. And then last, more mainstream, but still very important, on our Nescafe Dolce Gusto brand. For those of you not too familiar with this platform, it's a well over a billion and a half dollar platform, which is particularly important in our uh, European business, our Latin American business in Asia. The flat white coffee shop experience now brought into Nescafe Dolce Gusto. So you see we're using all of these trends and all of these experiences to really bring new flavours uh, and tastes to our coffee consumers. The next area I'd like to talk about uh, is sustainability, really important for us. And sustainability is at the heart, really, of our journey in coffee. Simply put, it would be impossible for us, as the world's largest uh, uh, coffee company, not to have sustainability at the heart of our business because if there are no coffee farmers, clearly we have no business. And I want to give you some examples of what we're doing in the area of coffee sustainability. The first is a, a project that we've been running on Nespresso, which is called Nespresso Revivals. It's no surprise that unfortunately coffee tends to be grown in areas that are a, relatively unstable and are prone to disease or to famine 
or indeed to war. And what Nespresso has been able to do through its Triple A programme, which is our premium sustainability programme that runs on Nespresso, is go into regions of the world that have been devastated by either war or famine or disease and reintroduce coffee to those farming communities. We started in South Sudan and this year we'll be rolling out into Zimbabwe a range of products where we have gone into communities and retooled, re-educated, replanted coffee plantations and allowed the local communities to thrive through our brands. The next is much more mainstream and is our uh, Grown Respectfully program, which we put through the Nescafe plan onto our Nescafe brand. This is the largest sustainability program of its type in the industry. And I want to give you an example here from Mexico, where we buy about 24,000 metric tons of coffee through the Grown Respectfully program every year in Mexico. And last year, for the first time, we really connected our Mexican consumers with our Mexican farmers by celebrating 1,000 individual farmers on Nescafe uh, jars in the market. And that was an amazing piece of connectivity. The, uh, the, the pictures of farmers visiting stores and seeing themselves for the first time in store is really humbling. And it allowed us to, in a meaningful way, connect what we do in the farms with what we do with consumers and bring both parts of that journey together. And then the last example here is on recyclability as opposed to coffee sustainability. Uh, Patrice mentioned this morning how importantly we take um, the uh, challenge of aluminium recycling. And on aluminium recycling, we, uh, we are 90% plus ready for recycling those aluminium capsules. And this is an example of a premium pen, a Caron Dash pen from, uh, from Switzerland, which we made entirely from recycled Nespresso capsules and was a big hit last year. So the next area I want to look at is leading in innovation. You heard a lot about that this morning. And of course, much of what I've talked about so far is in innovation. I just want to give you three more examples of how we're driving superior technology to deliver superior consumer experiences. The first, we've talked about cold brew uh, quite a lot already, but the point in this slide is we have a proprietary way of, of creating cold brew which allows us to manufacture at scale. And one of the successes of our cold brew initiatives is that we're able to take that formulation through a proprietary know-how and expand it very quickly into different markets at scale. The next example on healthy eating is a range of cappuccinos and lattes again that we've developed which have significantly less sugar and fat with no loss in taste. And again, for health conscious consumers, that has become a very important initiative. And then last in our leading brands, uh, making sure that we can leverage our technology in systems and continue to develop systems is important, which leads me to my next area, which is really harnessing and continuing to build our expertise in systems and machine design. Great coffee in portion is not just the coffee in the capsule, it's the delivery of that coffee through a superior system. And these are just three examples of some of the work that we're doing. The first and most significant is the virtual line. You'll have sampled it, uh, many of you, in, in the break. This is nothing short of a revolution for Nespresso. It's the new platform for Nespresso, offering a variety of cups from very small espressos all the way to mugs, uh, and we're rolling that out very aggressively. We'll be in 22 markets by the end of this year. You also see here uh, an Asperta system, which is the new machine from Nescafe Dolce Gusto, which is going to add real value in Nescafe Dolce Gusto, by and allow us to have uh, Bluetooth-enabled connectivity, providing great solutions for consumers as and when they want it at the touch of an app button. And then, the last example here is a, is a small example. It's a test that we did, but we talked about India. This is a test in India that we've done with Amazon, where we're offering that uh, aspiring middle-class urban consumer in India the chance to have an on-the-go Nescafe, which they prepare in their own home in an instant, creates a fantastic cup of coffee, and they take that with them as they go on their daily commute to work. 
That's a test that we've been running for six months. Very interesting results so far, and just an example of how we continue to innovate in systems. Embracing the cold opportunity, very uh, important as well. We've talked a lot about that. So let me just say, in China and ASEAN, we will continue to drive that platform. It's critically important for us. And we have plans to advance on uh, this platform and make sure that we continue with our number one position in China and ASEAN. As Chris said, we have acceleration teams in place and we'll be rolling out more initiatives in that space. And also, we have a strategy in the US to uh, take our Nescafe brand and the Chameleon brand into many new areas to make sure that we capture specific growth in these new trends. You see on Nescafe a couple of examples of a whipped latte and also a coffee protein drink. Again, you'll have the chance to sample that over the course of today. So let me talk about accelerating and out of home, the second last of our areas. We see about a 50 billion cup opportunity in this area, 70% of which is going to come from the uh, workplace and hotel space. So those are the two spaces that we're really focused on. Now let me just give you a little bit of context. Our business traditionally has been pretty soluble based and it's been single serve or bulk. Simple products for simple occasions with Nespresso coming in the top end. Over the last three years, we've done a lot of work to make sure that we can capture more of the value through the chain by offering roast and ground and more complex solutions. And now with Starbucks, we're able to take that to a whole new level with three brands that will really allow us to compete in that space. So I've got three examples of some of the machines and systems that we're bringing into this space to allow us to capture that. Let me just focus on the first, which is on Nespresso. We have a brand new machine that will allow us to pick up medium size and large offices with a machine that is fully wired to understand when it needs cleaned, how it needs cleaned. It has milk uh, as well as coffee as integral to the delivery system and it has a payment system built in. Complicated telemetry that allows us to be right there at the right point of contact with that machine to service it and give a great consumer experience, but importantly in this space, a great customer experience for the provider. Which brings me to the last part of my presentation, which is the last part of the slide, which is really driving the Starbucks opportunity. I get asked this a lot, so let me just give you two minutes on the background of the deal. With Starbucks, we have acquired roughly $2 billion worth of sales, the vast majority of that in the, in the US, but also some other markets in food service and also the rights to perpetually license the Starbucks brand, Starbucks and a number of their other brands in every CPG category with the exception of ready to drink and in all out of home uh, environments. So that's the deal. As you've heard already, we moved very fast to capitalize on this deal. And within six months, we've gone from, from signing the deal to having 24 products available for launch. You've had a chance to sample many of them over the course of today. These are the products. We have eight uh, Starbucks by Nespresso. We have eight Starbucks by Nescafe Dolce Gusto. And we have eight roast and ground and whole bean varieties available. But at the same time, we continue to drive our North American business, this big business that we've bought. And here's just some of the innovation that's coming. You'll see the same trends authenticity, new sensory experiences, healthy lifestyles. We continue to drive the business we have with that innovation as well. So really, Starbucks is coming home. We are live in 10 markets already. We will be live in over 30 markets by the end of the year. And initial indications of consumer uptake and customer excitement are very encouraging. Early days, but we're well on track to see this uh, opportunity realized. So that's been a, a, a fast uh, look at the landscape of coffee. It's exciting, it's dynamic, we have lots of growth. But I wanted to leave you with these four key takeaways. First of all, Nestle is the number one global coffee company and we have the three leading global coffee brands very well positioned with differentiated brand offerings to meet consumer needs the world over. We have significant growth opportunities across brands 
and channels and markets. We're leading innovation and we're leading innovation with a strong pipeline. And last but not least, we are committed to moving with speed to capture those opportunities. Thank you very much.